Yes, so I am Maria Shamain Centenera Buengamino, and my profession is creating life on stage, creating souls on stage. Bata pa ako, sabi ng nanay ko, pag binibigyan ako ng piso, pumapayag akong sumayaw. Kaya, bata pa ako, pro na ako. I only do it for the money. <laughs> um, bata pa rin ako, nag-umpisa ako, I think, ng mga grade 3. I was already um, doing declamations in school. And by the time I was in grade 6, grade 5, pinapadala na ako ng, sa inter-school competitions. Ang isa sa mga guru ko ay ang aking English teacher uh, sa Naga na nanay ng ating VP. Tapos, um, dahil doon sa competition na yon ng, ng inter-school, meron sa aking nakakita na judge, pinadala niya yung pangalan ko sa Philippine High School for the Arts. Tapos, doon, tuloy-tuloy na, nag-aral na ako and all that. Pero kung tatanungin niyo yung mga kaklase ko sa... Kulay de Santa Isabel, where I studied um, grade school. In Naga, um, we did plays, um, and um, there was we we were doing um, the Contented Princess. I think it was about the saint. I discovered for myself that when I lose myself in the situation of the character, I can forget myself and I can cry. In fact, my classmates. Still remember that until now, kahit nga si VP sinasabi yun na parang sila raw, maarte-arte lang, ako raw umiiyak. <laughs> Kaya parang sabi nila, bata pa, bata pa kami, bata pa sila noon, alam nila na I was really more or less parang gifted towards um, acting. So that was nice kasi bata pa ako, naramdaman ko yung magic na yun. So that guided my choices as an artist. And since bata pa, focus na, you have more time to hone your craft. Naalala ko, nung nasa grade 4 ako sa Olonga po, um, sa isang classroom lang, merong inter-class declamation contest. Oh, captain, may captain pa yata yung aking pyesa nun eh. Ah, wala akong sinabihan, hindi alam ng family ko, hindi alam ng nanay ko. Tapos, ginawa ko yon sa class. Tapos nanalo ako. Tapos, naalala ko yung pakiramdam nung dinideliver ko yung lines. I wasn't scared. Yes, I was nervous, pero there was that feeling of magic, of, of um, creating something in front of the audience. Maybe that beautiful feeling made me want to keep doing it. So I kept joining the acclamation contest until it finally led me to going to an acting school. In theater, everything starts with a script. So the script will tell you what the play is about, where it's situated, when is the time, what the playwright is trying to say. So yun ang Biblia. Um, inaaral mo lahat, who, what, where, when, why. No? And then ang proseso ko ay arali ng arali ng arali yung script. To the point na yung mga characters na kasama mo sa eksena, tinatanong mo, ano yung sinasabi niya tungkol sa'yo? Ano yung sinasabi ng character na to o ginagawa ng ibang character tungkol sa character mo? Tapos ano yung naganap nung panahon na yun? May, meron bang digmaan? Meron bang the milieu? Yung lahat ng pwede mong aralin tungkol sa panahon at sitwasyon ng characters at nung kwento na inisasadula nyo, yun ang inuumpisahan ko. Even up to the show, I always feel like you're creating. You never stop creating. You don't say, you don't do rehearsals and say, print, okay, I will, I will do exactly the same thing when I go on stage and perform. No. Yes, you are repeating the same blocking, the same movements, but what's happening inside the character, what's happening inside the actor should always be alive. It cannot be from remembering what was felt yesterday, it always has to be created today. Right before you're about to say your line, you are thinking of your intentions, of why you're saying it. When you move your hand to get something, you are thinking of what you want to get, not of how I did it yesterday or how it was blocked. It's always, it has always to be present. Every time you perform, which is also every time you rehearse, you're creating. So it's not a repetition. It's never a repetition. That's why when you watch theater, every show is different. Of course, in the West, there's that concept of printing. But if you print, you'll die because you're just trying to Xerox yourself. So you have to create every time. That's from the first day of rehearsal, to your last performance. So theater is so dynamic, it's so brilliant. It happens right before your eyes. From when I was young till 
college, I was taking up theater arts. So I knew that I wanted to practice theater arts. But when I had children, I had to face the reality that theater doesn't pay enough to raise for children. Um, so, in fact, I told my husband, go and um, join show business. And I stayed in theater for a few more years. Then I went into advertising to earn more. My eldest, bless her soul, told me, Ma, we will be happy with a pair of socks as gifts for Christmas, as long as you're happy doing theater. When she said that, I sort of had a blessing to really go back full time in, in, as a performer. So I went back. And every time people ask me if they should pursue theater as a career or if they should study it in school, I always tell them, only if your soul hungers for it. It's very demanding. Sometimes it won't pay enough. And for you to continue growing, you should be able to sacrifice financial security. Every step of the way, you have to be learning, you have to be expanding, you have to be like a sponge. Even as you grow old, you cannot say, ah, alam ko na, I know everything that has to be learned in acting. Tama na. No, you can't. You have to continue pushing and learning more about new characters, about new situations, about new stories. So it's for those people who can't live without it, who can't live without the arts. It was strange because normally I wait till uh, run-throughs before I start memorizing. But for some reason, during 33 Variations, I memorized way ahead of the run-throughs. And it was a good thing because when Julia died, I couldn't concentrate. So my difficulty when I was performing was focusing, training my mind not to stray and not to go to my pain, but to control my mind and just focus on what I had to do on stage. And that's the great discipline of um, theater actors. There are so many things that you can think of, right? But when you are on stage, you cannot but think of anything else but what you're doing on stage. During, I think, the first performance, my mind strayed. And I thought of Julia. And when I came back, I got so scared because my co-actor was already in another part of the dialogue. It was a good thing that I wasn't the one talking, but I got so startled because it had never happened to me before. And I realized that it is the greatest of disciplines, of mental disciplines, um, acting on stage, because you really have to focus. Um, so that was a great struggle when I was doing 33 Variations. Every time I, had, I stepped off stage and I was waiting behind, um, it was more of stopping my mind from wandering, from thinking of Julia and just focusing. It was so difficult because we couldn't go backstage. The audience was just right behind us. And it was parang, parang I felt like a soldier na parang, Ano lang talaga, concentrate, concentrate. It's a good thing that that happened to me actually on the first show. Because of that, I knew I had to discipline myself. And it was my therapy because I was allowed a few hours of a day when I could just, I had to forget what happened to my daughter. So it was therapy for me, I guess. I had some respite from that pain. This is actually a very exciting time of my life. When I was young, I was asked in an interview um, what my future goals are. What, what came out of my mouth was I wanted to put up a theater group and it's going to happen soon. Uh, we have relocated ourselves, our family in Bulacan and Governor Daniel Fernando asked Noni and I to help him form Dulaang Filipino which is a theater group that will be based in Bulacan. And we are going to stage our first production in June. And we are going to start um, auditions in February. Isa pa sa mas makabuluhan na proyekto para sa akin ay yung ginagawa kong Will You Still Love Me installations, exhibits. Dahil ito sa anak ko, uh, nung nagpakamatay siya, nagkaroon ng malaking pagbabago sa mundo ko. 
um, na pagtanto ko na may mas malaking dahilan ang buhay na kailangan talaga nating mabuhay para sa ibang tao. Kaya um, itong proyektong ito, yung Will You Still Love Me, it's based on Julia's poem, When My Mask Shatters and You See How Broken I Really Am, Will You Still Love Me? Pagpapatutuo na karamihan ng nakaranas ng mental disorder ay natatakot na kung ipakita nila yung totoong sila, baka hindi sila mahalin. Kaya itinatago nila yung kanilang pinagdadaanan. Kaya marami na nauuwi sa pagpapatiwakal dahil natatakot silang ipakita na maraming demonyo sa kanilang mga isipan. Yun yung aking project na malapit na malapit sa puso ko ngayon.